Hi, I'm Heather. I'm one of the systems engineers here at Pessler. This video is a PRTG overview of our on-premise solution. PRTG is an agentless network monitoring solution that can monitor your entire infrastructure. Let's sit down and start taking a look at it. PRTG is an agentless monitoring solution, so you do not need to install anything on your devices for us to monitor it. We use protocols such as SNMP or WMI to talk to your devices and pull the data back to PRTG for alerting, reporting, and mapping. Something else you need to know about PRTG is you do not need your own database. PRTG includes a flat file proprietary database built right into the, to the product. There are three interfaces with PRTG. This is the first one, and their main one is our web interface. The second one is the PRTG desktop client, which works on both Mac OS's and Windows operating systems right now. It has all the same information as the PRTG web interface, but it's in the client look and feel. The third one is our mobile application for smartphones, for Apple devices, and Android devices. So you can take PRTG on the go with you. I'm at trade shows all the time, and I have customers come into the booth showing me their mobile apps and everything in their PRTG environment, so our customers get quite proud of that. Today, now, we're going to focus on taking a look at the web environment. Once we're in here, you see that there is a device tree here, and that is our main hierarchy we use in PRTG. And I'm going to just walk you through it. We always start at the root because the root is the top of it. Underneath that, you're going to see I have a local probe and some remote probes. PRTG supports distributed monitoring, which means that we can monitor at other locations. So here, the local probe, that is on your PRTG server that you host. The local probe, or the probe, is the piece of PRTG that does the polling that reaches out to your devices. So the remote probes is just a piece of software that sits on a Windows machine at your location or another location, and it can pull the devices that you assign it locally. So maybe sometimes at your main location, you might spin up some remote probes just to help load balance some of your devices and sensors and monitoring. As we go through the probes, you're going to see groups. Groups are for your own organization. They really help you to figure out how you want to organize your devices in addition to that, you can also, if you want to get granular with your notifications when we talk about that later, or get granular on how permissions to who can access what, you may use groups for that. As we keep going through our tree and groups can be nested, we're eventually going to get to a point where we're going to have a device in PRTG. A device in PRTG is represented by an IP address or a DNS name. So when I go into the settings tab here, you'll see that in one second. And you just put the IP address and you have a friendly name for your device name. And then a device will get sensors. A sensor is one aspect of a device that you want to monitor. And for example, this one is simply called access point. It's an SNMP traffic sensor though. And you're gonna see we have traffic in, traffic out, and traffic total. These are called sensor channels. Different sensors have different amounts of channels depending upon what the sensor is because they all monitor different things. PRTG has about 238 sensors out of the box, and then we also have room for custom sensors. So here is the ping sensor for a switch, and ping is going to be your basic sensor that you use for your up-downs. And you can just see we're going to get your minimum, maximum packet loss and ping time in here. So that's the basics of the device tree, but there's a lot more to tell you about it. The settings tab here, and you can set settings based upon any level of the device tree. So right now I'm at root, but once you come in here, you could set location. You're gonna to have to add credentials for, you could do your Windows system credentials here. You could do your Linux, Solarix, Mac OS, VMware, Zen server, and SNMP. They are the main settings that you're gonna use for this tab. But you also may come down and change your scanning intervals if you want to set schedules, dependencies in your maintenance windows, and then change permissions for access rights. Also, channel unit configuration. If you want to change from kilobytes to megabytes or gigabytes, you may do it under here. Because I was at the root level, that will inherit to everything down in the device tree. But say I want to go 
into a group, I can scroll through and change everything at that level here. And you can see just from my group called Sigfox will those settings take place. You'll also notice in your device tree you have these tabs for 2 days, 30 days, and 365 days. So wherever you're at in the tree, you could see a view based upon those quick tabs for those time frames to get your historic data. And that's the one nice thing about PRTG. We keep data in the raw format so you can quickly retrieve your historic data. You're going to see this management tab and that helps you to drag and drop and rearrange your device tree very quickly. If you take a look at the top, the device button that you keep seeing me clicking on is the main one to always get you back to the device tree. But we always have this um, other one called libraries here. And where the device tree is a top-down hierarchy, the libraries, I call this the horizontal view. That's in my own terms. But it's a collection of sensors in different formats. So if you have different probes, for example, and you want to have all your display sensors in one view, I can use this tab here, create a library to space sensors. And then we can use that to set notifications or look at my space sensors in one view. Libraries do not have to be all the same type. I could create a library of just everything that has to do with emails. And I'll be having another video also based upon libraries, so you can take a look at that later for a more in-depth look at libraries. The sensor tab up here helps you look at sensors uh, in different formats. So if I want to have a list of my favorite sensors, I can take a look at that. I can look at some top 10 lists for sensors under each probe. I can look at sensors by type, by tag, very quickly to just get to different views of my sensors. And then when we, we get into the Maps tab. Maps, we call that in PRTG the same thing as dashboards. So it's more of a GUI look at your various um, sensor data as it comes through. And I want to pull up two of my favorite maps. This one, the Dashboard 2018. Um, and now these are all, too, I need to say they're in-house maps. Maps are all created individually. There are no out-of-the-box maps, so you have to create them all. So when I say they're my favorites, they're my favorites in our environment. Maps include a map designer. So the way the map designer works is you'll see here on the left side is a device tree. And as we scroll through the device tree, you can see everything down to sensor. On the right side are properties, different, different graphical ways in which you can display the data. So you take what you want to see in the device tree, how you want to see it from the property list, you drag and drop, pull them all together, and you can make maps. And what are the types of things you can see in maps? Well, here we call this our sunburst view. So I have sunbursts of my probes. And the sunburst is a circular view, and it comes out through all the groups to those different various sensors in the list. Then I can have some top 10 lists here in my map. I can have these rectangles of business process sensors, and the rectangles will change color based upon the sensor state. And then I can have a few devices pre present with sensor data. That's one example of a map. Another example here, it's going to be the same map, but just in a slightly different form, so you can see how you could see the same data in a different format. And here is a sunburst of a probe, but a sunburst of a group. I have my top 10 list as well. This time, my business process sensors are in traffic lights. And I list up sensors, and then I have some geo maps here as well. Now, I used to work in infrastructure for a long time before I came to Pessler, and I wish I had this map back in the day. So, Imagine this is a Visio diagram of a server rack that we have. I made that my background image to my map. I put my sensor data on the right side, and here's just my name of my devices, my IP addresses. Maps can also go in a map rotation, so if you have a large monitor that you sit and look at all day, you could come here, click your maps, and put them on a rotation and decide when you want them, how often you want them to rotate. So that's one nice thing about maps, and here you could see our holiday map that just came up. And as we finish our overview of PRTG, I do want to mention we do have a reporting engine. So you can come in here and create various different reports um, on PRTG in your data if you would prefer them in more of a report format instead of the GUI format that Maps gives you. And here's just an example of what a report can look like. 
Reports can be emailed to you in PDF, stored on your server as PDF, or you can run them and look at them in HTML format. We also do include notifications in PRTG. So to let you see what kind of notifications that we can do in our notification templates. So just to let you see what kind of notifications we have, let's take a look at our notification templates. There is going to be another video on notifications on our website, so you can look at that for detailed information on notifications. But so you know, you could see we can send emails to a user or group of users. You could do push notifications to our mobile apps. You can do SMS, Slack messages, Teams, send event logs, syslog, SNMP trap servers, run scripts, or send Amazon messages if you use that. We also have a ticketing system built into PRTG that you can use if you want to have a process flow for your alerts. Though if a human does not look at the ticketing system, then you don't know the alert is there. And with PRTG, you can send notification triggers to send to those notification templates. We have five types of triggers, state, speed, volume, threshold, and change triggers. So you have options when you want to decide how you want to be notified with PRTG. PRTG is licensed based upon sensor packages. So we have various sensor packages that you can use for your licensing. It is feature complete. So every license level does include all of the features that I showed you today. If you find this video helpful, feel free to like it and consider watching our other videos on our channel. If you still have questions, please contact support at pestler.com. And always feel free to comment for feedback or suggestions for other topics. Thank you.